This is a flying squirrel from our collection. Compared to other flying squirrels, this one's a little small. But it makes me wonder, what's our largest flying squirrel? Well, here's a Temminx flying squirrel from Thailand. The red-cheeked flying squirrel is a little bit longer. A common flying squirrel from the United States is this guy, the northern flying squirrel. It's a little chunkier. The Siberian flying squirrel has silvery hair. And our next one is so big, we have to adjust things a bit. This is a smoky flying squirrel. It's large, but not our biggest. Check this out though. The wings are nice and distinct. And if I flip it over, do you see the skin that connects their front and hind legs? Flying squirrels use this skin like a sail to help them glide or fly from tree to tree. It's called a patagium. And this made me wonder, do any other animals fly using patagia? I thought it was just squirrels, but I was wrong. This is a jar of flying frogs. How do they fly? If I carefully pull one out, take a close look at its hand. It's very large and webbed. If you look closely, their feet are like this too. These frogs use the patagia on their hands and feet to glide through the air. And that's not all. Here's a jar of Draco lizards. Take a close look at this lizard's side. Their ribs have extended to form a patagium on their hips. Flying fish can glide too, but they use their fins. And I was surprised to find that octopus don't fly at all. Back to our largest flying squirrel. Just need to do a few more adjustments to make room for our next specimen. This is an Indian giant flying squirrel. I thought this must be our largest flying squirrel. But again, I was wrong. Our next specimen is so large, it can't be stored with its arms open. Take a look at this. A red giant flying squirrel. This is our largest flying squirrel. Specimen use made possible by the University of Michigan Museum of Zoology.